Okay, good evening. It's good to uh, be here recording for you, but we much would rather have that you're here with us all together. And we're excited about the possibility about the upcoming Sunday morning where we get to be together, as many of us as can be, and uh, we'll be praying for that, and I know that you will continue to pray for that, and so many of you have already expressed how excited you are about getting together. If you would, open your Bibles up tonight to Jeremiah chapter 17. Chapter, Jeremiah chapter 17. We're going to be working out of verses 5 through 11 this evening as we talk about real faith versus fake faith. And I'll read 17, 5 through 11, and then we'll have our discussion. And we start out in 5 with, Thus says the Lord, Cursed is a man who trusts in man and makes flesh his strength, whose heart departs from the Lord. For he shall be like a shrub in the desert and shall not see when good comes, but shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness in a salt land which is not inhabited. Verse 7, blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord and whose hope is in the Lord. For he shall be like a tree planted by the waters which spreads out its roots by the river and will not fear when heat comes, but its leaf will be green and will not be anxious in the year of drought, nor will cease from yielding fruit. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart. I test the mind, even to give every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his doings. As a partridge that broods but does not hatch, so is he who gets riches but not by right. It will leave him in the midst of his days, and at the end end he will be a fool. I don't know if everyone knows what a succulent plant is. But it it really is an impressive plant. It doesn't take a lot of uh, attention to keep alive. It doesn't take a lot of water. And most of the time, if if you do it right, it's it's a beautiful color of green. I read an article about a lady named Callie Wilkes. She was given a succulent as a gift. 
and she took care of it. She was so proud of it. When people would come by to the, the house, she would show them her perfect succulent, this plant that she received that she was taking care of and, and so diligent to, to water uh, on a regular basis. And then one day she found a vase that she wanted to transplant the succulent into. And so she started digging around in the succulent's base and found that it was not planted in dirt, but stuck in styrofoam. She found that it was like this succulent. It was not real. And you can see me spinning the leaves here. This is not a real succulent, even though it looks so close to one. But her plant was a total fake. She spent so much time and attention for two years on something that wasn't even real. We're working out of Jeremiah chapter 17, and we're going to talk about fake faith and real faith. And we're going to talk about how much time and attention we're giving to those different kinds of faith. And before we start this discussion, I want you to ask yourself, how real is my faith? What kind of faith are we spending our time and attention on? And the first question is, are we watering the faith in others, which would be a fake faith, Jeremiah 17, 5 through 6, thus says the Lord, Cursed is a man who trusts in man and makes flesh his strength. We know that when we put our faith in other people that we will be let down. We know that when we decide to put the responsibility on other people of, of making us happy, we will be let down. Because that kind of faith isn't a real faith. That kind of faith isn't based on, on evidence. That, we, that make us believe wholeheartedly that we will be taken care of by that person. The 146th Psalm, verse 3, do not put your trust in princes, nor in a son of man. That would be a human in whom there is no help. And then 118th Psalm, verse 8, it is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. Now, we love people around us, and, and that's the way it should be but to put our whole confidence in someone to take care of us, to make us happy, to provide for us, uh, to make our lives spiritually fulfilled. That's a fake faith. We will be let down. Are we doting on the fake faith in ourselves? Verses nine and 10, the heart is deceitful above all things. We have a tendency to fool ourselves into thinking that we're handling things on our own. That'll never be the case. We will always need to be dependent upon God. The heart is desperately wicked. And that word desperately there in, in verse 9, desperately wicked. We need help. We are separated from God by our, by our heart when we are not following God's will. Proverbs 3, 5, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Not a wicked heart, but a trusting heart. Lean not on your own understanding. And then Proverbs 28, 26, he who trusts in his own heart is a fool. It's just a ridiculous thing to do to put our trust in ourselves as far as our spiritual well-being is concerned. Another question, have we been paying too much attention to the fake faith of our things? Jeremiah, verse 17, 11, describes a partridge who broods or builds a nest and then lays the eggs but does not they, those eggs don't hatch, but they go through the motion of sitting on the egg and taking care of the eggs and watching the nest. And, and verse 11, as a partridge that broods but does not ha hatch, so is he who gets riches, but not by right. Go over and look at Matthew chapter 6, verses 19 through 21. Matthew chapter 6, verses 19 through 21. We all have things that we love. We all have things that we're proud of. We all have things that we spent time and money possibly in, in acquiring. But we can't rely on those things to make us spiritually happy, to make us spiritually well, to spiritually provide the way that, that God can provide. Verse 19 of Matthew 6, Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys, and where thieves do not break in and steal. Verse 21, for where your treasure is, there your heart will also be. So we think about this idea of not putting fake faith in things that we own, things that we have, 
and even things that we want. And finally, are we cultivating a real faith in God? We go back a few verses in Jeremiah chapter 17, 8. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord and whose hope is in the Lord. For he shall be like a tree planted by the waters which spreads out its roots by the river. Will not fear when heat comes, but its leaf will be green. Will not be anxious in the year of drought, nor will cease from yielding fruit. What a great way to live. Knowing for sure as we put our trust in God that he will take care of us. He will provide for us. And when times like this that might make us anxious, we don't have to be anxious. We know that God is providing, that God is in control. He's taking care of us and we can be spiritually strong as we put our true faith in God. David wrote in Psalm 62 verse 8, Trust in him at all times, you people. Pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge, is a safe place for us. If we put our whole heart into trusting him. Callie Wilkes made this statement concerning her experience with the fake plant that I talked about earlier. She said, I feel like these last two years have been a lie. That's kind of trivial when you think about a succulent, a fake succulent. But it's not trivial if we are not cultivating the real faith of our God. We are living a lie. And we need, to, we need to try to evaluate our lives. We need to think about where we are spiritually, where our faith is. Is it a fake faith or a true faith? And then act in, according, in accordance to what we uh, have evaluated ourselves to be. One of the things that we keep emphasizing and we should emphasize, and I am sure without a doubt that we will be emphasizing is the, the by God's plan in order for someone to go to heaven, to become a Christian. And we put up this list on the screen time after time, and we will continue to do so because the Bible is so clear about what it takes to have your sins forgiven. It is so clear about what it takes to know for sure that you're going to go to heaven when Jesus comes back, that we will spend eternity with God. And we have scriptures like Romans 10, 17 that lets us know that we need to hear or receive the gospel of Christ and listen to it. John 8, 24 and 58, we need to believe what we hear and then repent of those sins that separate us from God. Luke 13, 3 and verse 5 as well. And then we confess Jesus is, that Jesus is Lord. He's the Son of God. Matthew 10, 32 and Romans 10, 9. And finally, Scripture teaches us, according to Acts 2.38 and other scriptures, that uh, once we decide that we are separated from God and understand that we know for sure that we are through sin and we're ready to be reconciled to God, we understand what we've heard, we're ready to repent of those sins and confess Christ and be baptized, we read in, two th in Acts 2.38 that, that we should be baptized for the removal of our sins. If you are in a situation as a Christian and you need encouragement that can be had by calling us, contacting us, getting a hold of us, just do that. We would love to pray with you. We would love to just chat with you. We would love to visit with you. And if you, you need other things spiritually, let us know. You see the email address on, on the screen. Contact us through there. If you're a member at Graber Road, you know the phone number. Call us here, and most likely, if you're a member at Graber Road, then, then uh, you have Andy's number and you have my number, and call us. We would love to talk to you uh, and pray with you and visit with you. Also, at the bottom of the screen is, is a, a website called freehomebiblestudy.org. If you are interested in having a Bible study over the internet and being guided through that process, learn what God's will is for you for eternity, uh, that what the Bible teaches about salvation and God's redemption, God's redemption plan get in contact with us through that website we love you God bless you and have a great rest of the evening I am